And I guess we should probably give credit where credit's due. Where did you first learn about this detail? Steve Basic. Hey, Steve Basic Architect. <laughs> hey, Steve Basic Architect, yeah. I think the first time I heard about it actually might have been Mike Slogan. Oh. But the first time that I saw a detail uh, was on a project where it was being used was Steve Basic. Yeah. But I mean, if you're talking about legends that are tall. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess my question is, because people who are watching this, probably a pretty small percentage know what we're, like, why are we doing this? Because conventionally we would still have foam and yep. then we would place concrete. Yep. Why are, why are we going no concrete and double layer advantage? Okay, so there's, for us, there's a few reasons to do it. Um, one, it actually saves the client money. Okay, I was gonna ask, I don't know how much we're spending on, you know, a four inch slab here, whatever the square footage is. It actually has nothing to do with the cost of Advantac versus concrete. What it has to do with is the flooring choice. So the engineered flooring that they have chosen, which we do know for sure is mm -hmm. going down here. No special glue, no special requirement. Okay. I just start nailing it down. Because everything's really easier when we're dealing with wood versus coming down well, to concrete. We can keep it in house. Um, from an environmental perspective, this is a more sustainable floor. If we can eliminate a little bit of concrete from a build, you know, we're, we're helping the environment it's to a certain extent. Concrete, there's a great Freakonomics episode yep. I need to re-listen to. The carbon cost of concrete's massive. It's huge. It's huge. Um, now I am function first. Like mm -hmm. if we did this entire building out of concrete right to the roof, but it lasts for 500 years. Yeah. I, I think it more than balances out. But if we can make smart choices, and I, I truly believe this is a smart choice, like this, to reduce a little bit of concrete here and there, I think it's a win. Now, I know, I know there's gonna be some naysayers. There's gonna be some people who say that, you know, not having concrete in a basement is not durable. First thing I would offer is, you know, have you done your research? Because if you haven't, then maybe you shouldn't be saying, no, you can't. There's a huge difference between conventional wisdom and fact. And to quote somebody that I've met, an opinion I value greatly uh, a few times, Coda once said, a statement without data is just an opinion. And I believe that to be true. So if you want to back up a statement, you've got to have some type of fact to back it up. Now, all I've done is gather information from people I know and respect in regards to the system. Uh, I've done similar systems on top of concrete in the past. We're just eliminating the concrete. Tell me what this whole, you tell me, I'm not even gonna ask questions. <laughs> what are we walking on? Okay, That's so we question. are walking on a slabless slab. It was supposed to be an Annie Lennox reference. We're walking on broken glass. <laughs> the floor is lava, Tim, the floor is lava. <laughs> So we have two inches of foam underneath the stego. And what's under that? So, okay, two inches of foam underneath the stego. So Suprema, two inch, so R10 nominal. Okay. Stego, which is our vapor, but more importantly, it's our radon gas layer. So it's how we're controlling soil gas. Brian's been educating me. So it's vapor and soil gas retarder. Yeah. Got it. I, I call it a soil gas poly because styrofoam technically could take care of vapor. Like if we tape the seams oh, okay. on that, it would be, it'd be, be done. Uh, but this is just, this is a guarantee. When you put down stego, in my opinion, that's a guarantee. You're never going to have a radon issue. And that's uh, the reason for the tape? And that's the reason for the tape. Okay. You tape all of your penetrations. You can see the connection to the wall there. Um, stego makes a great tape. I've had a few issues connecting to ICF. What I've learned is it's not actually the tape. It's the ICF it's being nice. dirty. Okay. Um, but Sega makes a great primer, which works very well with ICF. And that, I'll find some for you later. We'll stick your hands together. <laughs> <laughs> so Stego, another two inches of foam. And that gives us a nominal R20. So okay. we're... In, we're not losing any heat. And what's under this layer of foam that we're standing on? Oh, wow. That's really where there's a lot of magic happening. Okay. Because if you talk, we never really talked about the geography of the actual site, 
but below the footing is roughly a two inch, or sorry, a two foot engineered rock slab. And then we've got another eight to 12 inches of crushed rock. Okay. Then the footing went in. Then we've got about eight inches of crushed rock. Then we put down a geotextile fabric. And then we put in a fine layer of sand, screeded that all off, basically essentially the same way you would screed concrete. Then we started with the foam. Okay. Because you want this thing flat. flat. Yeah. Because we still haven't mentioned there's no concrete down here. There is no concrete Besides down this thing. No, yep, there's concrete in this cavity, but there is no concrete down here at all, except for the footing. Except for the footing. Yeah. Except okay. for the footing. Yeah, because the slab's floating, or yep. the, in this case, the, the floor is floating. Yeah. So I wish I had a left a piece of, or access to the footing down there, but it's, it's basically a raft. It's a raft made of styrofoam and cross-laminated uh, cross Vantec. Okay. The reason the Stego went in between is I wanted to protect it from any overdriven fasteners. So, so got, okay, help me out, Aaron. As if I'm installing, you, the foam is installed parallel to- We cross-laminate the foam as well. Okay, so each layer of foam is yep. opposite. We And then we get down here, and you're also cross-laminating the first layer of Advantech yes. over the foam. Yes, so the two by eight sheets of foam run this way underneath. We run them the other way underneath, perpendicular. We start with our Advantech all running this way. Okay. We chose to go X-Factor uh, for a reason, but whether you went with a double layer of Advantech or you went Advantech, X-Factor doesn't matter. Just run it perpendicular. Okay. Change 90 degrees. And, and that helps to really kind of keep everything feeling Yeah, and flat. offset your seams. Okay. So, like, stagger your joints the same way. How come your Advantech isn't as yellow as ours? Ah, so you, your Advantech has a lot of southern yellow pine in it. Yeah, we're getting it, I think, out yeah. of Oklahoma. And ours has a lot of aspen in it. And that just, difference in plants. I feel and like- the wood basket. Yeah. That's, that's what it is. So it's, it's mostly the aspen is just a white. Yep. Yep. Or a white, or- I think, um, to be honest, sanding this floor and just putting a finish on it this color, I'd be happy with that on the main level. I skipped the hardwood. I just saved you some money, so. I'll, I'll bring it to the client. Yeah, I'll I bring expect, it to the client. I expect some good whiskey tonight. <laughs> All right, well, we can make that happen. So the reason we went X Factor over here is because this is a custom, we don't know exactly how long this build is gonna take. Mm -hmm. And you can literally wash this floor. You can literally wash this floor. So from a client perspective, when they come in, it's still yellow, it's still bright. We snap lines or tape out like furniture, mm -hmm. cabinetry. This is where the bathtub is gonna be. Uh, anybody who has trouble visualizing, you know, what a project's actually gonna look like when it's finished, it's a very clear picture for the clients. And the minimal cost increase for going to X Factor, pays yeah. for itself. Yeah, I've, some people online have said they're only paying $5 a sheet more for the X Factor. We're I, paying eight. And Brian and I were talking about it just last week. I'll ask Robert, but I think we're somewhere around eight Canadian. So that's like 50 cents for you. Yeah. I love coming to Canada. That exchange rate is like. Yep. <laughs> so this layer though, it doesn't get fastened. It just nope. gets put all together nice and tight. We just tongue and groove, it locks together. Just or keep shouldn't it together. stay tight because we've got to maintain our gap. Well, but it's yeah, it's essentially this is, friction fit. This is a little tighter than it needs to be, but I'm not worried about that down here because once this gets closed in and tightened up, what what is this going to see? This came in after the floor that was taped, so it's yeah. really never seeing moisture. No, and if you've let it acclimate outside anyway, yeah. it's already well. We're still open to the air right there, yeah. but it's it's seeing no weather. I try to order all of our panel products as early in the process as I can, break the bands, uncover them, and just let them start to act. Because they come out to us with like 5% moisture. So and obviously we're not 5% moisture. No, and neither, <laughs> neither are we. <laughs> but that's quite often what we try and do is we'll get lifts at a time brought to site and they will just sit here. Yeah. Like all of our, our zip came on one, one truck. Were we ready for it? No, but it was here yeah, for when I was ready for it. Say our X Factor came at the same time. It so was then here. this gets fastened. Screwed or nailed, do you have a preference? I, I do screws. Yeah. I do screws. Um, we actually used uh, subfloor adhesive underneath here as well. Okay. Um, it, 
I hope nobody ever has to make a repair. Right? <laughs> yeah. 